Welcome back to the channel, everybody. My name is Trent, and today we are going to be doing some power off and power on stalls, something that you can absolutely expect to see on your check ride. So when you're on your check ride, uh, before you're doing any of these maneuvers, the very first thing you're going to want to do is a what's called a pre-maneuver checklist, which is typically consisting of two clearing turns, a 90-degree turn one way, a 90-degree turn the other way, because the DPE is going to want to make sure that you are paying attention for traffic in your area. And then uh, you're probably going to do something similar to your Gumps procedure, where you're going to check to make sure your fuel is on both, and that your mixture is rich, and uh, that your uh, fuel pump is on, and that your uh, if you're running a constant speed prop, that your RPM is full full forward, uh, and that your switches, seat belts, and so forth. So we're going to assume that we've done all that stuff, and what we're going to do now is we're going to enter into slow flight, and then we're going to do a power off stall. But before we do that. Let's talk a little bit about why the FAA wants you to learn this stuff, and very simple, just much like slow flight, the stall is very likely to occur when you are in the pattern. So typically, base to final, you're coming in there, you're kind of slow, you're kind of low, and you're making that uh, base to final turn. And if you fall behind the airplane at that point in time, and it spins, uh, stalls and spins, you can be in a whole world of hurt. So the training here is to help you avoid that. So while I've been talking, I've been decelerating the aircraft, uh, put my car bead on here. And so we're now in this, uh, the zone where I can deploy full flaps, so I'm going ahead and doing that. Now this particular aircraft, I'm flying the Remos GX. We've got 40 degrees of flap, so that's pretty cool. All right, so the DPE is probably going to expect you, they might want you to do a slow speed stall or a power off stall in a turn, or they might want you to do it in straight flight. It'll really up to them. But what they are going to want you to see is, before you go into the stall, is that you're maintaining uh, in slow flight, the uh, probably a level flight. And then much like you would be in base, you would establish a rate of descent, typically 500 feet per minute. So we'll go ahead and power back now. And then as soon as that rate of descent has been established, which we have done now, uh, you're going to be pulling the nose up and paying very close attention to keep coordinated with the rudder pedals and pull back on the stick, pull back on the stick, pull back on the stick, waiting for the stall to occur. This aircraft is very slow, it's about 34 knots. There we go, there's our stall. Lower the nose just a little bit, full power, and try and maintain a positive rate of climb with losing the smallest amount of altitude possible. Once you have a positive rate of climb, you can retract one notch of flaps. If you've got car beat on, you want to push it back in, you're probably going to need some right rudder. Once you've got another positive rate of climb, you can pull back in another notch of flaps, and then if the positive rate continues, you can go ahead and pull in that last notch of flaps. So in the Remos here, we can stall and recover and lose no more than about 50 feet. If you're flying around in a Cessna 172 and you really do a good job, you're probably gonna lose 100 to 140 feet if you've done a superb job on, uh, on the recovery. So now let's demonstrate a power on stall. Power on stall is typically there to simulate a departure stall. So you're climbing too steep. Maybe you're trying to clear an object. Maybe you're simply not paying attention. You don't have a sterile cockpit. People are distracting you. Something is going on. You're low to the ground. You're on climb out and you're pitching the aircraft up too much and that's causing the aircraft to stall. So we're gonna simulate that here. Uh, rather than go full power because I don't want to pitch up more than 20 degrees because I don't have a parachute on. Uh, I'm going to just do this at 4,500 RPM. We're going to call that full power for the purposes of this demonstration. So this is a flaps up or a clean maneuver. Uh, check for traffic on my iPad. Make sure there's nobody around. Same thing like before. The DP is going to expect you to do your clearing turns and your pre-maneuver checklist, but we're going to skip that for the purpose of this video. All right, so now I'm going to start pulling the nose up. And again, this one is super duper important to maintain a coordinated flight step on that ball with your so here we are 55 knots and decreasing and all that's going to happen here is we're going to go full power and put the nose down to the horizon and min lose the minimum amount of altitude possible one more traffic check to make sure blow me and we're doing about 49 and i'm just pulling back and pitching up and pitching up and pitching up and pitching up and the more i pitch up again if somebody's distracting me and i'm just really not paying attention i'm losing all this airspeed and we're going to get into a stall here pretty darn well there it is full power lower the nose and voila we have recovered just like that okay so there's something that i want to talk about that applies to both 
uh, power on and power off stalls, and that is the importance of when the wing drops, how to correct it. So obviously, the reason the aircraft stalls is not because so much of your airspeed, it's because the, uh, here, let me just put my autopilot on so I can use my talk to you guys. All right. So if this is your relative wind, this is your wing cord. When the wing cord, uh, when the critical angle of attack, which is the difference between relative wind and your wing cord, exceeds, when the, when the angle exceeds the critical angle of attack, that is when the wing stalls. It's, it can happen actually at any airspeed. If you're in an aerobatic aircraft and you yank back on the stick really hard, yeah, you can absolutely put yourself into a stall even though you're supposedly going quickly. So, there, when you get into a stall, the thing that you really have to watch out for is if a wing drops. So, a couple of ways to correct that. So why does a wing drop? First of all, the wing drops because one wing is, is stalled more than the other wing, so if it's this wing over here, this wing's gonna drop. The very worst thing that you can do in that scenario is take the stick and go to the right, or take your yoke and go to the right. Why is that such a bad thing to do? Well, if you imagine when that happens, that, flat, that aileron over there is gonna go down to push the wing up. Well, what's a down aileron very similar to? It's very similar to a flap. And what's a flap do? It increases drag. So if I have a stalled wing over here and I put the aileron down in an effort to lift the wing back up again, what am I doing? I'm actually stalling that wing even more, which takes an incipient spin and puts it into a fully developed spin. So you do not want to do that. So how do you keep the wings from dropping? Well, there's two things to do. Number one, by getting the nose down and getting the wing inside, back inside the critical angle of attack, now both wings are going to be flying again, which means they're both going to produce lift, which means that whole dropping wing is going to stop. But let's say that you're not able, you forget to put the nose down or what have you, what, what are you going to do then? Well, now we're talking about rudders. So if you imagine an aircraft in level flight, when you push the rudder, left rudder, right rudder. But now if you drop a wing and you push left rudder, it actually pushes the nose down and if you put, push right rudder, it pushes the nose up. So when that wing drops, if it's the left wing drops, you want to get on that right rudder very, very quickly and leave the ailerons neutral. When you do that, that is going to help you to recover and get back level, level wings at the same time that you are now dropping the nose and applying power so that you get that get it back inside the critical angle of attack so that now both of your wings are flying and when you do that well that will stop you from going from an incipient spin into a fully developed spin so when you're very low to the ground that is the move that you have to be really really good at you need to have very very fast feet so that you're not using ailerons to try and recover a wing that has already been stalled all right, so that is it for my lesson on power off stalls and power on stalls. If you've enjoyed this video and found it useful, I'd love it if you would smash that like bu 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 button. And if you have questions or comments, please feel free to put those in the comments down below because I absolutely love answering your questions and comments. And if you're not yet a subscriber to the Fly With Trent channel and you like this video and you want to see more videos like this one, go ahead and become a subscriber. And finally, last of all, if you'd like to get email notifications of uh, future videos, as well as get access to my free course on how to choose the very best flight school for you, head on over to flywithtrent.com, enter your email address, and you will be part of the inner circle. Thanks very much, everybody. Take care. We'll see you in another video soon. Bye-bye.